Hello, today I'm going to show you how to make Abbey FlexiCapture scalable to meet the needs of your organization. Now the very first step in this process is to make sure you read the system administrator's guide that Abbey produces as part of the software. This is an important first step because it will tell you and document for you what steps are required. So very important, so please read that um, when it comes to scalability, also throughput measures and those kind of things are also mentioned in the system administrator's guide. So you can get very much uh, specific information that, uh, that you'll need in your specific organization. So read the administrator's guide and that will give you the first step. But uh, what we have to, in today's system, uh, in today's demo, is we have two systems. One is the Abbey FlexiCapture server, and I'll pull that up. Um, this is actually our other server. So this server is the server that is running Abbey FlexiCapture currently. And what we want to do is have our other server do some specific tasks associated with Abbey FlexiCapture, but it will not be the main application server, but instead will extend Abbey FlexiCapture, making it more scalable to operate on this machine and do some specific tasks for us. So instead of one machine processing all of Abbey's documents, we will now have two. And of course, there's no limitation on, t on just two. You can have as many uh, servers and processes as you want running at any time. So that's the concept for today. But uh, first off, what we will do is we'll read the administrator's guide, but I'm going to give you a, a sneak peek on the steps that we have to perform. First is we want to open a port, and this port is specifically documented in the admin guide as 10023. Um, this may have to be done in your firewall or using a system network administrator, but in this case today I'm in Amazon AWS, and all I'm going to do is open up the port uh, for the security group. So of course this may be a little bit different in your environment, um, and so obviously you'd want to make sure you have the right networking capabilities, whether it be a firewall or a system network administrator to help you out here. But all we need to do is open up that port 10023, as documented in the admin guide, will allow the source from anywhere, and we will save that. So that port will allow the communication between those machines to use that that uh, that port as it does its um, authenticating and, and process. Uh, differentiating there. So now that we have the port open, what we are going to do is on our new server, the one that we want Abbey FlexiCapture to start using for some of it, is we're going to go into the installer and we're going to process um, a Abbey scanning station. So definitely make sure you're in the installer. Go ahead and go into your auto run, distributed, stations, We'll go ahead and hit OK. And as we go through the installer, there's some important things that we'll point out to you here. We will hit Next, accept our terms, and this is where we want to be. Notice that by default, the software is going to install all of these stations. That is not what we want to do on the server that we're extending to. So by default, let's just go ahead and remove everything and we will only install a processing station. This is the feature that will allow us to extend Abbey so that it processes certain uh, parts of re the recognition or export process on this machine. So we'll hit next. By default, we're gonna go up for this demo, use the network service, but understand that based on your permissions and the setup in your specific organization, you may wanna provide a username and password here. And we will let Abbey perform the installation. Okay, now that the installer is finished, we will go ahead and exit out of it. And I'll just bring your attention to the service that was installed. I'm gonna refresh our services here. And you'll see that we have an, oops, excuse me, we have an Abbey FlexiCapture Processing Station service installed. If we expand this, we should make sure that it's running because this is what will process the communication between our two servers. All right, now that we have the processing station set up on uh, our extending machine, what we're gonna do is we're gonna hop back to our main application server. Within the uh, main application server, we have a processing server. And you'll wanna open the processing server and make your way down to the stations that are located here. These are what we call the processing stations. This is what we just installed on the uh, other server. All we need to do is right click in the white space, hit add stations. For those of you that are within a network, you may be able to browse to the proper machine. In our case today, we're simply gonna type in the IP of the machine, and we can do that by hitting the custom button here. 
All we're going to do is type in that IP. Hit Add. And you'll see by default that is stopped. All we need to do is right click on the new entry and hit Start. And it should be able to uh, authenticate from there and manage um, that other server's processes. Now, in my case, both machines, um, one was a clone of the other, so the machine name is different, but you'll see here um, the location, when I double click on each location, those are different. So there are, they are different machines. Actually, you can't even add a machine twice of the same place. So what we're going to do is just right click and go to properties, and this is where I wanna show you what we can do differently for that specific dedicated process. Uh, on, the, on that specific station, our new station, obviously we see the name and we can rename it. We'll tell it to start automatically. These are options that you can, of course, um, specify. You can require a certain amount of disk space, and there are some logging options. Down below is where we get into the nitty gritty, though. Here's where we can dedicate how many CPU cores from that machine are dedicated to our process. And you can see here it's just one and one. That was a very basic install we did. You can also set a certain priority that FlexiCapture will give to this process while it's processing. And a lot of our customers change the acceptable task types. This is where we can say that this machine is only responsible for importing and exporting documents. Um, or we can specify if the machine is only going to do recognition and maybe verification. So this is where we can specify how that machine is dedicated and what it does. Now at any time, once we change that, you have the ability to see how tasks are being processed within our tasks option. Now this server right now is completely blank, um, but on your machine, if you just refresh, you'll see some entries here once uh, documents are processed. So once again, that is the processing server, and we added a station to it. A very clean process. All we need to do is add the station on our extending server, and then come within our main application server and modify the processing server settings. So I hope this was a good video for you and that you learned a lot. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact us. Thank you so much.